One day in 1986, a group of friends having a chat and a drink in St Catherine's Club came up with the idea of a pantomime. Within days, volunteers were volunteered and shortly after in December that year, they performed Cinderella, raising £2,500 for Christie's Hospital. Little did we know at the time that we'd still be performing 34 years later, having raised some £175,000 for various charities, principally for Francis House and in more recent years for St Anne's Hospice. A number of us have been involved throughout those years and sadly we've lost many good friends during that time. But together with Welcome New Additions, we've become great friends with a wonderful sense of camaraderie, enabling us to truly enjoy putting on our annual show. The pandemic, of course, stopped us in our tracks, but in the best theatrical tradition, our director, Claire McCrory, decided the show must go on. She wrote a radio play, we all agreed to take part, and we started Zooming on Friday nights, which became the highlight of our week. We particularly wanted to perform this year to pay tribute to our long-time club chairman and panto villain for 30 years, Mike O'Hare, who sadly passed away in December. His presence is greatly missed by us all. He, for one, though, would insist the show must go on. So in Mike's own words, prepare your chuckle muscles, get them ready and enjoy Jack's last lullaby. Traditions and superstitions amongst theatre folk, including the phrase, break a leg, which is used to wish someone good luck before a performance. Whistling in the theatre is a no-no. Also considered bad luck is presenting flowers to a lead actress before she has performed. Hello, my name is Cal. I am the North West's premier ghost hunter, and I'm here to introduce my very own podcast. Cows, Spooks and Spectres. I'd like to explore with you, over the next few episodes, the madness and strange goings-on in theatres around the North West. We start today at the Thorley Plaza, where, as I speak, Thorley's thrilling theatre tour is in full swing. Guided by Mr K Thorley, the proprietor of Thorley Plaza Theatre since 1950. Oh, Speak of the devil, I spy the very person. I must be careful not to mention the Scottish play by name, as then I would have to leave the theatre, spin round three times to the right and spit before asking if I can return. Excuse me, young man. We'll have no spitting in this establishment, or else we'll be seeing the back of you. No, 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 Mr Thorley, I'm very sorry. I was just demonstrating one of the theatrical superstitions that theatricalists like yourself believe in. May there be a problem, Mr Foley? Is this young person with you? I'll not have anyone spitting in here. We've only just had to pull straight on. Callum, spitting? Really? How common? You knew I'd bring you up better than that. No, I'm not spitting, man. I was just... Behave yourself, Callum. I said you could come on our little experiment if you behaved yourself. What is going on? Mother? Cow? Oh, hello. It's Mr Thorley, isn't it? Of Thorley's thrilling theatre doors. Well, Mr Thorley, I'm always looking and available for a few thrills. In fact... Rachel! Our Callum is making a right show of us! I'm not anti-Rachel. I'm just recording my podcast. Podcast? Leave it out. You'll be in plaster cast if you don't behave. Now, apologise to your nan and to the thrilling Mr Thorley. Oh, hi, nan. I'm sorry again, Mr Thorley. Oh, cheer up, Cal. Come on. Might be time for another cup of... Do you fancy a wagon wheel? Oh, as we wait once again in the spectacular tea rooms of Thorley Plaza while the 
Could people of Wiggins WI have yet another cup of tea and no doubt another trip to the lavatory? My mind wanders and peruses the thoughts that maybe they should have stayed at home with a box of PG tips and a bog roll. However, as I have discovered in my journalistic career, sometimes tea and wagon wheels is just what's needed to oil the memories. Ah, here we go. Yet another announcement. Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to take a short break for your convenience. <coughs> I know it's the fourth one, Nigel, but I'm not going to make those stairs again for at least ten minutes, if at all. A short break, ladies, for your convenience from the world famous tour of Thorley's thrilling theatre's mystery and madness mayhem. Try saying that without your teeth. Now, please make yourselves comfortable, and Nigel here will take your orders. Oh, that's better, Raquel. My chances are killing me. Oh, there you go. You sit down, Mother, and we'll have one of them speciality green teas at Plaza in Thorley's world famous for. Or so it says on this menu. Hmm. Lovingly handcrafted scones with juicy, delicious jam and luscious cream. Whipped to an IP. Madame, I can definitely recommend a Plaza cream tea. One of the best. Almost as spectacular as his organ. Oh, I am looking forward to seeing that famous Thorley Theatre appendage, Mr Thorley. Do we get a chance to play with it, Mr Thorley? I can't wait to get my hands on some of those pipes. <laughs> As a theatre aficionado, I've dreamt of this opportunity. I think you are out of luck, our Raquel. I just heard someone tinkling on it while I was on my way back from the auditorium lavatories. Tinkling on it? Hmm, that don't sound very hygienic. Oh, that is rather strange. Geoffrey, our resident organist, is not doing till 4.30. Well, not only is Geoffrey an early bird, he's doing a splendiferous rendition of Lullaby of Broadway, and I can't imagine that's too easy on a Wurlitzer. He must have exceedingly nimble digits. Oh, I'd also admire a man with nimble digits. <sighs> <sighs> Are you all right, Mr Thorley? <sighs> Mr. Thorley has gone a very peculiar shade. There's a dance rehearsal going on too. I could hear a right load of clumping about on that stage. <gasps> Mr. Thorley! This information appears to have deeply shocked one of the Plaza Cafe staff. Oh, oh. carry on taking the orders, Nigel. Um, Nigel will be here to take your order in one moment, ladies. Never fear. I myself, along with Derek, come on, Derek, will check on the impromptu rehearsal and solve the mystery. Blimey, he's light on his feet for an octogenarian. As I gaze at Mr Thorley's footwork shuffling along the tea room's parquet, I notice his pallor. It's as if he's seen a ghost. Wait a minute. A ghost? M Mr Thorley, can I come too? Wait for me. Now, Nigel, do these scones have currants or cherries in? Because I'm telling you, cherries do nothing for my digestive problems. Mr Thorley, what are we doing? Should we not call the police? If there's an intruder playing the world, it, sir. Although I must say, whoever is doing it is doing a great job. My toes are tapping like nobody's business. Shuffle step, shuffle step, ball change. Uh, no, Derek. I fear the police could do nothing. Oh, I think this is it. He's finally come for me. What are you talking about, Mr Thorley? Who's come for you? What's going on? You're making me nervous. I'm only a volunteer here, Mr Thorley. There was nothing on the train about dealing with phantom whirlitzers. 
Oh, how could I have forgotten? It's the anniversary. Well, what anniversary? What are you on about, Mr Thorley? I'm getting proper nervous. Oh, 70 years. 70 years since that fateful night. At this point, let me share with you the beginning of an incredible story that Mr Thorley began to reveal to us as Derek and myself sat alongside him in row 43. It was possible that Mr Thorley was opening up painful and uncomfortable memories, but giving me some insight into an in-depth and often moving look into the final days and hours of this little known Northern historical event. everyone you're getting there it's looking um marvelous delores as the director i'm holding you responsible this lot are terrible where did you even find this cast not one of them can dance what on earth do you mean jackson where did i get them from from st catherine's landowners and parish social club where we always get them from but none of them can dance I'm not sure it's actually a requirement on the membership form to perform a routine from Singing in the Rain. I can. Perform routine from Singing in the Rain? Just saying. Oh, do pipe down, Kenneth! Oh dear, Jackson, I'm exhausted. It's a disaster. Oh, Lady Edith and Rose, as women of certain ages, are complaining non-stop about the dance steps. They say they're too complicated. Sissy and Bella are constantly trying to outdo each other with their costumes. There are sequins all over the place. And Kurt Albright, our only real actor, didn't turn up for the read-through. So I've had to cast Bert, Lady Edith's gardener, as the lead. And I think those Wellington boots are welded to his feet. And it looks like poor Evelyn will have to be the front and the back end unless I find someone who can do it. Charles can't, he's claustrophobic. Oh, maybe I'll pencil Kurt in, in case he decides to turn up. He's a professional. I'm sure he won't mind, will he? And I know that Kenneth is your little brother, but could you have a word with him and tell him to stop sticking his beak into everything? He's really upsetting everyone. Sure, babe. Will do. Psst. Psst. Kenneth, come here. What are you playing at? You know this is me one big chance to get into Agnes Newbold's good books and work with some proper theatre folk for once. Phineas Jackson, why is it you get all good gigs? I've got just as much talent as you, and that fake American accent ain't fooling no one. You're only there two weeks, and from what I hear, Agnes ain't too keen on Americans. And another thing, this lot are rubbish. None of them can dance. And if any of them managed to stay awake through the whole thing, it'd be a miracle. Kenneth, just put a sock in it and do what I tell you. And then we'll both be moving on to bigger and better things with Agnes. And as far as American accent goes, I can't help it if I've got an easily attuned ear. It's a blessing and a curse. And I don't hear anyone telling Miss Sissy to lose the accent. But she is American. Oh, stop splitting airs. Oh, there's Dolores. Hey, doll. Uh, I've spoken to Kenneth, and he won't be a problem anymore. Will you, Ken? Although, I hate to admit it, but he, he has got a point. How are we supposed to put on a show with a group of non-dancers? Oh, Jackson, none of them can act or sing either. But it's never stopped us before. But, doll, this year is different. Oh, if I hear that one more time... Oh, oh, good heavens, here comes Arabella. She looks furious. I thought you said Kenneth was going to behave. 
Well, no one can say she's fragile. Her ego's bigger than mine. Although mine is certainly well-deserved. Jackson, darling, may I just have a word about that routine? I'm totally aware that when we do that second turn, the audience will see my best side. And I've instructed... I, I mean, I've asked Mary to sew extra sequins on. Personally, Jackson, I think second turn's a mistake. There's only one person who could perform a turn like that, and they're not even in our little ensemble. Oh, do please be quiet, Kenneth. I think perhaps you should turn, Kenneth. Turn right around and go and sort out the props like you've been asked to do. Now there's a good boy. I'll go sort out the props, Jackson, but as far as I can see, you're losing your touch. And it's starting to look like Aladdin all over again. Just leave it, Kenneth. You know that was not my fault. Aladdin? What does he mean, Jackson? We haven't done Aladdin for years. Not since Mr. Ratner, Lady Edith Gardner, at the time, disappeared with all that treasure. Nothing to say, Bella. He's just causing trouble. Oh, dear, Jackson, there's enough squabbling going on between the cast members without you two starting. Could I have a word, Arabella, dear? I'm just wondering about sequins. I'm not actually sure when farmhand number two would wear sequins. But, darling, this year is different. We're performing at the plaza. The audience will expect to see my best side. Bella, Bella, what on earth do you mean? Both your sides look the best to me. <laughs> but maybe I could make a, a teensy little suggestion? I'm not sure he's up to it this year, Madam Director. His choreography, that is. It, it's looking rather dated to me. Of course, if you were uh, looking for someone else to take over... Oh, please, Kenneth. Do put a sock in it. Right! That's it! I'm not doing any more of these ridiculous ball changes! It was great, truly, Lady Edith. You looked like professionals. Professionals? Really, you didn't. That's very rude, young man. There's no need for that. I'll have you know I'm a professional through and through. It's the rest of the cast that are struggling. And Dolores, I do think you're talking tosh. Half of us have never heard this tune before, let alone know who sang it. He's just trying to make us look ludicrous. I don't know why we can't just sing the hole in the elephant's bottom again. <laughs> Okay, take five, everyone. Dolores, can I have a word, please? Psst, over here. Psst, it's me. Over here, behind the curtain. Chop, chop, you three. Oh, Rose, why are you hiding over yonder? Can't you see? I'm having a sit-down, sissy. Now then, budge up, Miss Rose. Oh, hello, Bert. Squidgin, old chap. <coughs> Jolly good... Grand plies today. I've been putting in a bit of practice while I spread my mulch over Lady Edith's pumpkins. Oh, do be careful, Bert. It's a bit squashed in here. I don't nudge my poodle clip. My stylist says I wear this better than Betty. Your poodle clip? Why on earth have you brought your dog to rehearsals, Bella? And who's Betty? Betty Grable, of course. And my poodle clip is my new coiffeur. Honey? Are you sure your stylist didn't say, do you want to look like a poodle? I'm having trouble with Lady Edith's poodle. He likes to dig holes, you see, and then he fills him with shit. Well, I think he looks I'm smashing, Bella. Here, sit down, Rose. You do look done in. I certainly am. I've done more ball changes than a tennis match today. I think Jackson's gone raving mad. I need to catch my breath and read the sports page. I'm sure we've never had to dance like this in previous productions. He's trying to ballywell kill us. Oh, did you hear? Kurt, the poor old bean, is playing the back end of the cow. Oh, how the mighty fall. Maybe I'll teach him my grand jetty. Or perhaps he'd be better off with one of my derriere steps if he's playing a cow's ass. Rose, honey, some of us have dancing in our blood. And some of us have to work at it, don't you, Bella? Hold your horses. What did you say? Kurt's playing the back end of the cow? Yes, he is, and I, for one, am jolly excited, actually. I've never worked so closely with a professional before. Well, he'll certainly be closer to you than anyone else, Miss Evelyn. Very close indeed. <laughs> well, 
If Kurt's the back end of the cow, who's my love interest then? Oh, there's a vacancy, is there? Perhaps, Miss Sissy, you've had a chance to notice my jitterbugs. Surely she's just got to cast someone who's got the hips to dance and can hold a tune. I'm told my St. Louis shag is spectacular. Oh, do be careful with your gyrations, Bert. There's not much room behind this curtain. Careful, Bert, old bean. What on earth are you doing? Oh, oh. You put your back out. <laughs> Michael and I once had private dance lessons in New York, you know. That was 25 years ago, Arabella old thing. I don't think his hips are up to much now. Well, you just don't forget. <gasps> Darling Jackson says my ooh-la-la is perfect and he's changed the choreography so my sequence will hit the bantams at the plaza. Oh, I just need to ask him again about those 242 sequence. Jackson, sweetie! Two four two, isn't that soccer? I was considering getting some bantams for Lady Edith's rose garden. It's very good for the roses, is chicken. Shit. I'm flabbergasted. I just can't believe it. What is Dolores thinking of? I know it must have been a bit of a shocker for Kurt. Poor old stick. Sequins? Why has Arabella got sequins? I'm the star here. Not to mention my mother-in-law is Lady Edith. Anyone deserves sequins, it's me. It's outrageous. Farmhand number two. She ain't even farmhand number one. If she's having sequins, I want them. And I want the bantams fixed on me. Mary, hey Mary, sweetheart, let's talk sequins. Just you and me now, Miss Rose. Can I offer you an apple? In fact, if you can guess how many apples I've got in my bag, you can have both of them. And now, this message from our sponsor. Now then, it's me, your old friend Bert here. And you join me just as I'm pulling out one of my turnips. Now, as you know, I'm a huge fan of vegetables. I even grow my own in Lady Edith's garden. I tell you what, you should see my spuds. Massive they are. Anyways, I don't just eat veg. I love a bit of meat, I do. A tasty rump. A lovely bit of thigh. I'll even take a sausage from time to time. And there's nothing I enjoy more than a good old-fashioned lamb shank. And where do I go for all this top-quality fare? Why, Wielden's Family Butchers, of course. That's where. Meet to please you, please to meet you. He's the national sausage champion, I'll have you know. Wielden's. Best nosh you'll ever have. Any, anyway, c come on, lad. Back in, back in here. Now, now you don't want to miss your cream tea. Mr Thorley, are you all right? You're as white as a ghost. <laughs> Take a seat, Mr Thorley. You look like you've had a proper to do some. What's going on, Arkham? At this point, I didn't want to frighten my elderly relatives, but my interest was definitely piqued. I don't know what's going on. There's a right racket in there. Music on the organ with nobody playing it, and tap dancing that sounds like bullets going off. But there's no one there. And then Mr Thorley telling some tale I couldn't quite hear. Something about a lullaby. Oh, Mr Thorley, I can't do it. I'm sorry, but I'm off. You'll have to butter them scones yourself. Butter? For 4 99 I am zooping for a, a bit of clotted cream. Oh, mother, there's a rehearsal going on. How exciting. And there's no one dancing. I might get to the front for once. I'm always available to trip boards. Can we go and take a shufty? No, no, not at all. Oh, go on. I've got my tap shoes with me and my support bra on. 
I think I've even got my reinforced sparkly leotard in my amber. I'm sure I could squeeze in it if they need another chorus girl. I'm ready and I'm willing, Mr T. Uh, uh, I'm afraid it's completely out of question. It's just not safe. Not safe? Tap dancing? Not safe? I've had a couple of onions from it, but... Stop getting so excited and be quiet, Raquel. Mr Thorley hasn't got time to reinforce the stage for your heel drops and flaps. Now, come on, Mr Thorley, tell us what in heavens above's name is going on. Uh, I, I'm not sure. It's been so long since all, and I, and, I, and, I, and I really don't want any unfortunate incidents or complaints from... Who? From that lot? Oh, don't you worry about that. They've got nerves to steal. And any road... It looks like Doris has taken over buttering scones and making tea. So we'll be here for at least another hour. Please, Mr Thorley. That's what we're here for, really. The, the, the thrilling and mystery bit. If you tell me the whole story, I can record it for the podcast. You never know it. It might make you famous. Famous? Ah, uh, there was once a time, lad, when that's all I craved. Alas... Not now. Oh, very well. It will come as a relief to... to spill the beans, as it were. Uh, might I share with you good people a vintage sherry as well as my sorry tale? Oh, I don't mind if I do, Mr Thorley. So, there we have it. Part one. But let me tell you something about Mr Thorley, his reaction to the phantom organ playing, and his strange story about St Catherine's amateurs aroused my curiosity. So, with the help of Google, I thoroughly researched and found the evening news headlines from the 21st of December 1949. Let me share them. The Manchester Evening News ran with Jack's last lullaby. And the Stockport Gazette, Deville's final finale. So, the plot thickens. It's a real pea super. Did something untoward happen at the plaza? Does it have anything to do with the mysterious organ playing? Will we solve the mystery? Tune in next time to find out more. Hello? Thank you for listening to our radio drama, Jack's Last Lullaby. We hope you enjoyed it, or even understood it. Please click the link to donate to Francis House, our chosen charity. And if we make enough money, we promise not to do another one.